Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode, I am super excited to talk to Rodney Scott from Rodney Scott Barbecue in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I've been <laughs> I've been trying to do this interview for a long time, and uh, we finally got it put together. Rodney's in his car, the only place that's quiet, and uh, it, it's a it's a great one. He's such a cool, cool guy. He's straightforward about everything. We talk about his early days when he was 11 years old, when he first cooked a whole hog. We talk, talk about the process. We talk about the about Hemingway, where he first started off, and then branching out to Charleston, about Sam Jones and meeting Sam Jones for the first time in Charleston, wine and food, and Big Apple Barbecue. It's just, it's jam-packed. It's about 20 minutes of barbecue bliss for me. Uh, at the very end, we do talk about a Charleston episode. I believe it's a second Charleston episode of um, Parts Unknown, the Anthony Bourdain show for CNN. And uh, I had recently, maybe two or three months ago, watched the episode. It's If you haven't seen that episode, go to Netflix or Hulu and, and check it out. It, it's, it's, it's an amazing episode, and Rodney Scott's in it. So I wanted to ask about Anthony Bourdain. So he talks a little bit about him, and he gives a piece of advice that Anthony Bourdain gave him, which is... It's just great. Great advice. It's very Anthony Bourdain, so I think you're going to love that. If you're digging these, please subscribe. Uh, I think the button's right there. Uh, subscribe. That way you can get these in your feed. I, I add about two of these per week, so I don't want you to miss out on anything. It's their interviews as well as uh, barbecue joint visits, uh, special content, uh, wood piles. Uh, I, I'm big into firewood, so there's uh, some cool wood piles. <laughs> Well, videos, ones that'll blow your mind. Uh, I have a podcast version of this, as well as different interviews that are on just a podcast. Just type in Kevin's BBQ Joints on any of your podcast networks. I also have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with a ton more content, uh, links to uh, Underground Barbecue in Los Angeles, as well as uh, festivals and cool photos of barbecue stuff, lots of neat stuff, as well as uh, links to all the podcasts and all the YouTube stuff. So you can just go there. It's a one-stop shop. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Basically, I've, what I'm trying to do with these interviews, I'm trying to celebrate barbecue as well as kind of document barbecue world as it is today. And okay. um, just want to kind of like briefly go over your history, go over uh, the um, whole hog, and then kind of like what, what's going on now, like and also Charleston a little bit, and then what, what, what you got in the future. And this... And, of course, there's that James Beard thing that um, is, <laughs> is amazing. And congratulations. That is yeah, so – I'm so happy for you. That, I couldn't be more happy. And it's funny. And all these people that you probably don't even know were like, so happy for you. It was, it was so great. Man, it was it was an amazing ride. It's, it's, I'm still riding high off of that. Yeah. And, and all together, like this whole thing has probably been a pretty amazing ride. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, um, yeah. the, the You know, to – Grow up working in barbecue and to to have it now at this level is just it's just amazing. And it shows that I, th I think it's that you know that silly thing, but it shows that hard work pays off. It, it does. It sounds it like does. something just to say, but it's not. I don't think it's it's definitely true. It definitely pays off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still smiling, which is which is amazing. yeah yeah. Well, let's let's go let's go back. I guess we're, we kind of start just jumped into it. What's a usual day like for you? Like what's today looking um, like? Man, today uh, I come in, um, check on everything, make sure my staff is in place, uh, check on the proteins, check on the sides, um, just just kind of start off slow with a lot of good mornings, checking on my wood supply, uh, sauce, you know, the basic barbecue mm -hmm. stuff. Now, do you are you so you you're based? Do you live in Charleston? Yeah, I'm now in Charleston. And you said like from what I've read, you started cooking whole hog at eleven. Started cooking whole hog at 11 years old, yes. Did your father start the restaurant? It was my father. Uh, side. It was a little uh, side gig to do barbecue, and we had like a little general store, you know, out in the country, yeah. and barbecue was that, that extra thing on a Thursday that we did, selling barbecue sandwiches. And uh, we went from barbecue sandwiches on Thursday to doing it on Fridays, Saturdays, and then we went from Wednesday Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And was it always was was it always an idea to do whole hog, or did you think, well, we'll do pork shoulder or pork butt? Like, was that something that that you had? Like, why did why whole hog? Well, whole hog was all that we did, you know. And growing up in the country, a lot of people had hogs, so it was one of the easiest things to get a hold to, and, okay. and one of the cheapest, you know. So I'm guessing that you know people that in the area that knew whole hog and cooked whole hog, if you're going to take an animal out, why not cook the whole thing? Gotcha. And from what I remember growing up. 
a whole hog would either be cooked on a pit or made into sausage for, you know, winter foods. Did your family know how to build a pit or was that something that everyone kind of in that area knew how to do? Oh man, that area is so creative. It would blow your mind. Uh, you had people using old refrigerators. You had people digging holes in the ground. Oh, that's. Um, you had people using cinder block just to build pits. You know, it was whatever you could find pretty much that could support a hog for eight to 12 hours that people built just to cook hogs on. So it, it, a pretty creative area. <laughs> and then, but your guys, you got, was your first pit, was it a cinder block pit? The first pit that I learned on was, uh, it, the one that I cooked on when I was 11 yeah. was an old, uh, drum, like an oil drum Oh, that was made into a pit. And then I went from that to the cinder block pit. Were you there when they were building that first pit? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. When we first built that cinder block pit, I, I was right there and I watched the guy build it from the ground up and i said wow what is this going to do you know how is this going to be different and it was different and it was better and at that time did you kind of did you at all appreciate what you guys were doing like were people coming in from other like out really far outside the area or was it mostly people locally we had uh, a bunch of locals um and then there were a few people that were from the area that would come home and visit that would just kind of drop in from time to time whenever we were cooking hogs mostly locals and would you sell out at those times? Not really. No. I mean, it's a, it's a tiny town. Yeah. So we sold out from time to time, but not always. You know, it, w- it would tend to be a hog would be left over, you know, maybe 10, 12 pounds or so, maybe left over out of a whole hog, you know, that kind of thing. And would you kind of divvy that out to friends and family kind of thing or use it for other stuff? Mostly friends and family would take it home and put it on grits the next morning for breakfast. Oh. So oh. it would be like pork and grits for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Was it was it the was it the uh, the New York Times article that kind of put you into the national spotlight? It was definitely a New York Times article that put us in the national spotlight. You know that article went out and the phone started ringing and it never stopped. <laughs> and that was kind of like when barbecue was starting to get bigger all across the country, right? I, I, I want to say it was during that time. You know, I started hearing a lot of people, you know, that went into barbecuing and a lot of new guys that were starting to learn the old traditional ways of doing it. And for me, I just started paying attention to how many people that were talking about barbecue. I never had any clue <laughs> that many people were excited about barbecue when that article came out. Yeah, because you weren't like me from Los Angeles, like like looking on the internet, like using probably Yahoo at the time, just trying to find anything because you were in, you were in it. You're deep in it. Yeah, I was just I was just cooking, man, trying to trying to pay the bills, you know. And and so you at that time, like when you you said you went from like then you went to Wednesday to Saturday. When was it? Was it the um, Charleston Food and Wine that was like kind of the next step? Was that the next? I'm trying to f- figure out your progression. Charleston Charleston Wine and Food was oh, definitely wonderful. the next step. They. Uh, they introduced me down there as one of the local pit masters in South Carolina. And, you know, it got the attention of quite a few chefs and locals around Charleston. And they started to make the trek up to Hemingway, where I used to be all the time. So, yeah. and it just kept trending, you know, going on and on and on. Barbecue kept trending. And they were like, well, who who do we know that can cook barbecue? And, and me being one of the locals in South Carolina, Charleston would always recommend, hey, this guy's one of them. And was that when you, when you met Sam Jones? That's when I met Sam Jones the next year. <laughs> well, Sam Jones, everybody. Sam Jones. <laughs> Sam Jones. <laughs> it's funny because I was actually watching. I interviewed him, and he was sitting like in a in a in a, like a workshop with like a, a gun locker behind the, and uh, his yep. gun safe, and 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 I, we he talked about the story. I think when he first met you, but it was interesting. His stories, he could tell these long stories that are wonderful oh, and yeah. amazing, but it's he's such he it just he's just as good a storyteller as he is at cooking barbecue. He's he's a great dude, Sam Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, that, I think that he had talked about how he he was even nervous coming to that. I think that first event because oh yeah, he was he was a little nervous. You know, it was he went through the same thing I went through. First time cooking away from home, and uh, here it is, all these people around you're expecting this great product. So you you definitely want to produce the best thing, the best that you can. So you were nervous for that first one too. Oh, yeah. I was super nervous. Super nervous. Um, I still get nervous every cook. Do you, do you think that's good for you that you're nervous because you're still excited about it? Yeah, I, I feel like it's a good thing. I don't like the feeling of the nervousness before, <laughs> but uh, I feel like it's a good thing. You know, you, you kind of like the rabbit and the tortoise. I, I like to refer to that. You know, you you want to stay slow and steady. You don't want to get that confidence and think you got it and lose the race. True. You know, I, 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 I rather stay slow and steady and, and Kind of make sure that everything is consistent. Yeah, I think that's when people get like too, like too at ease that they make mistakes or don't care anymore. 
Oh yeah, I, I'm never at ease. No. I have an event in a few days, and I'm nervous about it already. <laughs> just like no, I was, that. just like I was nervous to talk to you. <laughs> oh man, don't be nervous about. I'm me. not nervous. <laughs> no, I, well, I was at first. Just cause, no, because I, I really respect what you're doing, and I really appreciate what you're doing, and I Thank appreciate you. your time. And I was just like excited, nervous because I've been meaning I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm fine. After this first second, I'm like, okay, he's just the coolest guy. <laughs> he's a normal guy. Like, oh, uh, so then big, big apple barbecue was that kind of the oh, next? Man, big apple barbecue was was life changing. Uh, first time I did that, that that just went over the top. That was the real deal. Do you remember which year it was that? Who was out that first year that you were at? It was uh, Pat Martin was there. Oh, Pat. So, uh, um, uh, Ed Mitchell was there. Oh, Ed was there. That was the early. Yep. It was. It was. It was quite a few people there. Yeah, and it's and it, and it's also it's that's a different type of exposure that New York exposure because I guess you got New York Times and then this is a whole other level. Yeah, you, you know, uh, uh, Mike Mills was there. Jimmy Haygood was there. Was Blue Smoke? Blue Blue Smoke was definitely there. You know, they they pretty much controlled the event. Seemed like. Oh, that's yeah. Everything wrapped around their restaurant that weekend, so it was like Blue Smoke was the host. It was, it was, it was. Man, that propelled us even further. And, and then, do you think, like, were you starting to at like this time? Were you starting to see cars from other states appear, like license plates from other states? Was that starting yeah. to happen? <laughs> man, cars start coming in. Uh, RVs started pulling up. Um, <laughs> Oh, people doing you like know, barbecue treks and things. Yeah, they were doing barbecue treks. You know, one little minivan pulled up with a small couch in it. <laughs> it was a group that was going across the country trying to find barbecue, and and it's you've seen some of the weirdest things show up. You know, people people from Massachusetts, uh, Wisconsin. You know, you see all these cars from other states just started pulling into Hemingway. Doing the the Charleston wine and food is that what made you? think well I, did you kind of fall in love with charleston and think i could open up a restaurant here or what was the impetus for that not at first um at first i was like this is a great place to hang out i like charleston yeah and the thoughts of opening a restaurant here were far beyond me at the in the beginning and then i decided you know what it's not a bad idea um i said if i could i would in charleston and the opportunity came up and, and here we are what was that what was that first were you nervous for that too was that something that Cause that's oh, a big man. venture. Yes, very, very nervous. Uh, uh, coming into a new city, you know, already having some barbecue people here. It was, it was. I was nervous, very yeah. nervous. Well, can can you tell people what the difference food wise it is from your restaurant in Charleston versus Hemingway? Um, Charleston versus Hemingway is we got a larger menu here. We got catfish on the menu. We got smoked wings here. Um, we're doing uh, spare ribs here. Banana pudding is our dessert. Um, we have French fries here, fresh cut fries. Oh wow! Uh, and there's a steak too, cheese. isn't there? Some kind of like, uh, oh man, yeah. There's there's a, there's a steak sandwich here, that's very popular with us. Um, it's, uh, it's a ribeye cut steak sandwich with uh, cheese, uh, onions, lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Uh, I like to nickname it the Southern Cheese Steak, <laughs> Southern Philly Cheese Steak. That's great. Uh, is that every is that an everyday item or is that a special? That's an everyday item. Oh. Yep, all of those are everyday items. And then are you making additional, like, how many sides do you have in Hemingway? In Hemingway, it was just mostly coleslaw, beans, and uh, bag pork skins. Okay. And you have um, greens in Charleston, right? Yeah, we got greens here, baked beans, uh, coleslaw, mac and cheese. You know, we got the works. And then hour why hours, what are the hours in Charleston? The hours in Charleston are from 11 to 9. 11 to 9, every day a week? Every day, seven days a week. Don't you get hungry seven days a week? <laughs> I do, yeah. That's... Hey, so we got we to gotta feed you seven days a week, 11 to 9. <laughs> I get hungry seven days. Someone also said, too, like, I pay I pay rent seven days a week, so I should be open seven yeah. days a week. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. You got you to pay the rent. That's so, and then, but for, for Hemingway, what days of the week are you guys open now? Um, Hemingway is actually Wednesday through Saturday. Okay, um, so. When I made the move down here to Charleston, I turned – Hemingway business was turned back over to my folks. Okay. So Charleston is my my seed, if you will. It's the new beginning, you know, um, of Rodney Scott. Uh, kind of left the family business and, and came over to Charleston, opened up, spread my wings. I know that it, it's it changed it changed the the whole scene in Charleston, which is which is wonderful because whole hog whole hog is something special. Oh yeah, it is. 
It's a lot of work too. And all and how many hours is it? 11, 12 hours for a whole? Hog? 11, 12 hours average on a whole hog. And are you getting your hogs from somewhere specific, like one place? We got one guy, one guy that we're dealing with right now. He's he's been great to us. Yeah, how great is that? Oh man, it's amazing because you know who you're gonna call. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. How much are you going? How many hogs are you going through a week? Oh, we go through at least fourteen a week right now. Wow. Minimum of about fourteen. That is that's so crazy. So what's what's up with Birmingham? Birmingham is about to launch. Birmingham is ready to get started. I'm ready to get started in Birmingham. We're looking to open January. Oh wow. Um, uh, Birmingham, get the smoke going, and, and, and the pigs out the door, man. We're, we're ready to feed Birmingham and all the surrounding states. Why did you choose Birmingham? Is there a specific reason? Do you, did you travel there a lot, or just, just made sense? Or uh, Like Charleston, I travel to Birmingham a lot, um, and my partner lives down there as well. Okay. And the, the opportunity in real estate came about, and I said, hey, man, this would be a great spot, you know? It's not too far of a, it's, it's a good drive, but it's not so far that I can't handle it. So I was like, hey, look, Birmingham would be a great idea. Let's do it. How far is that from Charleston, roughly? It's six and a half hours legally. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so five and a half. <laughs> yeah, legally. <laughs> six, okay, that makes sense. So will that be the same? Is it the same concept? So it'll be seven days a week, same menu? Exact same concept, same menu, um, same style of cooking. The pit house will be right there on site, So, which means the hogs will come off right there on site oh wow that's and then will you be using the same guy oh yeah oh yeah same guy wow now i had heard and i read somewhere but i don't know if this is a just a rumor new york maybe someday maybe maybe you know not (laughs) in the immediate future but maybe all right maybe but but it could you could branch out and have additional ones in the south right definitely definitely we plan to man we we plan to have as many as we can. Let's feed the world barbecue, yeah. you know? Okay, so I can break, I, can I break the news that you'll be opening one in Los Angeles in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Well, I mean, that's another place I've visited quite a bit. Uh, uh, I, know. I, can't, I, we, I can't say yes and I won't say no. Yeah. I don't know the, the whole, the, the, the way that you design your pit room. I don't know if you could do that here in Los Angeles legally. I don't oh, know. Man, it's, I don't know. I don't know. L.A. might not may not like that. If you figure if you can figure it out New York and their regulations, you could figure it out in a lot of big cities like Los Angeles. Well, hopefully we can. You know. <laughs> hopefully we can. I wanted to ask too about the James Beard Award. What was that like? And congratulations! Shock- oh, thank you. Oh man, that was so shocking. Um, they had to tell me to get out of my seat that night to go up to receive the award. That's how shocking it was. Um, <laughs> It was an amazing feeling to to go up there and and that's that's something I dreamed about before because I went to another ceremony once before. Okay. And I dreamed about walking that stage and, and never had a clue that it would happen to me. Wow. And for it to happen, man, it was amazing. And what what is that night like? Do you, do you go there? Forgive me because I don't I don't know. But do you go there? Do you go there not knowing if you won? Yeah, you go not knowing. Um, okay. It's just like it's it's like the the biggest awards that you may see on TV. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, you you walk in there, you you're, you hit the red carpet, you say hello to people, you you you're you're a nominee, and a lot of folks know that you're a nominee. And you go to your seat, and they call out the nominees and and the category, oh. and they announce the winner once the envelope opens. So <laughs> you you don't find out until they open that envelope and. That must have been it so was, surreal. That must have been crazy. Oh my goodness, man! That that night was amazing. I could not eat. Um, <laughs> I wasn't drinking. I needed a drink, but I wasn't drinking. That makes sense. But uh, afterwards, man, all all the all the emotions slowed down just a little bit enough to, to get a drink and and a sandwich and to enjoy that. What sandwich did you have? I had a burger. Oh. Uh, we went to the spot and, and and it was a cheeseburger and and. That was perfect. <laughs> that, that's, a lot of times a, bur- a, a burger. I was going to ask you like a, a silly question just to find out what, what kind of food do you like other than barbecue? What do, what's your go-to in Charleston? What's a, what's a fun, like a, like not, not, a, not like hus, husk or like a, a high-end place, but what's a place that you like to go to just for your basic, like say you're starving you want food? Nana Seafood and Soul. Okay. Oh, man. What do you this get there? This guy named Kenyatta, him and his mom, they... Oh my goodness! This the seafood is just amazing. <laughs> is it fried? It's fried. It's it's uh, uh, boiled. I uh, mean, he has it all. Wow. So you, you got a choice. And that's in Charleston. Uh, yeah, garlic shrimp, fried uh, shrimp, uh, 
it's great. You got to check it out if you're ever in Charles. Oh, for sure. No, I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Well, I, I just wanted to, to thank you for what you're doing and, and from the barbecue community, we appreciate your passion and your, your kindness and, and your hard work is it's, it's something that we all value. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and I can't wait to go to Charleston. I'm, I'm excited. And, and from what I've seen, and, and I wanted to actually touch on too, the, I recently watched the Anthony Bourdain episode. Yeah. What was that like? And do you have any thoughts on Anthony Bourdain? I've always, I've never had a chance to ask anybody since he passed. Man, I've always loved Anthony Bourdain before I met him. And um, when I did finally meet him, we had a nice discussion about, you know, life, uh, TV recordings, food, and people we've met along the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he was a great guy, nonchalant, laid back, you know, just straight up cool. Mm-hmm. And I said, I would love to get the opportunity to feed him. And he said to me, let's do something together. And a year later, we recorded the episode and, and he enjoyed it. We had fun. We sat there and talked as if we'd known each other for 100 years, man. It That's was, what it seemed like. It just seemed like yeah. a great conversation. He, 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 he was that kind of guy. And when I heard that he had passed, I was in New York getting ready to do Big Apple. And, and when I found out, it was... It was a, it was a tough day. Yeah, definitely. But you know, he, he gave me some advice uh, when I first met him. He said, "Don't eat the shit sandwich." <laughs> and I was like, "What is that?" He said, "Don't let society control you with what you do, be it on TV or be it in your everyday restaurant." He says, "Just don't eat the don't eat the shit sandwich." That is amazing advice. That's 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 great. That's a great takeaway from this. And for that's I I, I haven't I haven't heard that before. But that's yeah. Sorry well, if it's a family show. But no, yeah. not at all. No, I'll, I'll say at the beginning. Like that, it is. No, it's no. I, I, you. I've talked to some people that at the beginning they said, "Is it okay if I just swear?" Though, and I'm like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but that's no. That's that is great advice, and it's it's important. It's hard to get away from that. It's hard to to get away yeah. from the noise. And I'm sure you yeah. have. I'm sure you have a lot of people chomping at you and and constantly, right? right? It's it's crazy some of the calls and, and, and emails that you may get or visits you may get, yeah. but uh, you know that that advice has always stuck with me and 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 that's what I live by. Well, that's that's great advice and that's a great kind of way to end this. And thank you so much for for sitting in your car doing this. I I, I so appreciate it and and thank you. I appreciate I, it. I look forward to, to seeing you soon. Well, come on down, Rodney Scott's Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> one location right now, one near you. <laughs> uh, that's, like, <laughs> that's true. If someone's watching this in a few years, they'll be like, "There's one around the corner." What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, take it easy. Have a, have a great All week. All right, man. Have well, a thanks. good one. Thanks Cheers. so much.